So what's up guys and welcome to Ebert's Fly Workshop or maybe the Fly Tying Outlaw who knows if I'm changing the name of the channel we'll see <laughs> for a really funny and good reason um, today we will be tying a fly that's called uh, Bloody Butcher and was requested uh, a few months ago by Stan Grimmer here in Iceland and just like any other request, we try to fulfill that and we, um, yeah, the flies will go on a list which we will work by. Um, Moon is a guy who's originally made the fly originally and it's from, from the United Kingdom. Just like so many of those uh, super classic uh, wet patterns. Uh, for the tail of this uh, beautiful butcher pattern, we are using a red cock or a rooster and you'll trim this off here. Um, this fly, you can fish this one in both uh, running water and, and still water. Uh, I'm using an RX wet fly hook number 10 for this uh, fly. You can use it like way smaller, down to even down to 16, uh, 10, 12, 14 and 16. Probably 12, 14 and 16 are the most uh, popular sizes. Um, for the thread, I'm using a Semperfly Nano Silk uh, 30 denier, just to make sure we have enough space for everything. But uh, you will need relatively strong thread for this fly. Uh, for the body of the fly, we are using this uh, Semplefly Mirror Tinsel in silver. And for the rib of the fly, finally, we'll be using a 0.2mm uh, silver wire from Semplefly as well. Uh, so we'll start by attaching the, uh, uh, the wire onto the hook shank to make sure it's in its place and I actually take the wire like down under like so and do a tight wraps all the way to to the back where we want it to end and it turns out to be more you know uh, beautiful if you if you start with it from start with it, with it from the beneath when you start to do the rip. Uh, for the body of the fly we are using this um, uh, sil silver um, tinsel from uh, from Semperfly and we'll attach that tightly and firmly down to the down to the hook shank and we'll do a little fast forwarding here since I'm dubbing the uh, sound on this video in the English version um, as you said as I said you can use this fly both uh, in running water and and still water uh, it turned out to be here in Iceland, a really strong pattern for for the uh, Arctic char. It it will work for brown trout as well, but there is something with it uh, for the Arctic char that it likes it. I don't know why or what, but sometimes it's absolutely crazy. It goes for it again and again. If you're fishing it in brackish water or or or, or in uh, close to the ocean. Um, we will helicopter off the wire and um, it's nice to keep the thread tight while we do that. As you see the body it's not completely perfect but it's like I'm satisfied that you do the job. Uh, for the hackle of the fly or for the throat I'm using a rat, rat hen uh, for this one. And <clears throat> and it is important with this feather, you see how I do it, pick out one feather which uh, has the fibers. Yeah, it will go about the length to the hook point. Then we are going to cut like a little brush on it, like so. And uh, with, with that brush, with the shiny side of the feather facing up and front, it's way easier, as you see, to catch the uh, feather with our thread. It's way easier 
Plus, uh, you have to create the brush on the thicker side of the feather, which is closer to the tag end, because like the stem on this size of a feather, it can be weak, and we don't want to break the stem while we are doing our wrapping. And that's why also, that's also why I'm using those hackle pliers, and those are really light weight hackle pliers. You would not use a too heavy one for this, and you will neither use a hackle plier that. Uh, kind of cut through the stem where it's uh, supposed to hold the feather. So uh, uh, working with like fine feathers like this, you should maybe think about, consider to think about that when you both buy hackle pliers, what you're going to use them for. Uh, I have few, like this light one. Then I, of course, I have heavier ones, definitely, but I would not use those heavy hackle pliers for this job. It's like two weak, two weak uh, feather stem in this case. And speaking about if you're tying this fly in a smaller number down to 16 or, or even smaller, uh, you'll probably just use your finger instead, if possible. Um, now we are going to take the throat or the hackle, and I'm gonna split it in like two in the middle. So going to try to leave space for the wing on the top so we are going to fold it for like down by each side of the of the uh, feather uh, for the wing we are using this pair of uh, mallard wing uh, duck wing and we are using this blue shiny deep blue or, or it's like almost black blue uh, beautiful uh, part of the feather I like, and uh, I put them together like like so, so they are like almost like a married uh, couple. And those are two pieces of feather. You see that? And you can put my finger in between. We don't want to shuffle that too much up because we are going to use a pincher up here, and we have to decide the uh, length of the wing. So. The length of the wing, I like to keep it like about the length of the tail. You can, in some cases, use like a shorter uh, type of wing, and you could you could technically be with um, or tie this fly with a little shorter tail. But uh, my preferences are those, and that's why I'm tying it like this. And when we tie down the wing with the pinch wrap, it is important to not kind of split the wing, but the wing has to sit on the hook like so um, so it's not on just one side of it you have to kind of split the wing if possible so it's leaning uh, to the both sides so it's like open then we do the pinch wrap two or three tight wraps here uh, well not the perfect wing but it's gonna definitely definitely gonna do the job and we'll Go here in with our needle and then pick out those track fibers of the hackle. And then we can adjust the wing a little bit. Uh, but with this feather and uh, the, the wing part, you don't get many, not too many chances to do the um, to the pin trap too often. You can do it maybe twice, then the feather is going to be kind of jammed up and you need to if you if you're looking for that look of a fly which is like in the book has to be tied perfect then you don't get more chances with the pincher up than only one but that's tying for you know some facebook people on facebook or social media commenting commenting on a on a picture of a fly but uh, uh, my personal opinion is of course that what matters with fly tying is to make flies that are like successful fishing with the supreme court uh, in fly tying that is not on social media that is a fish that's gonna at the end gonna rule your fly if it's eligible for the water if he likes it or not yeah remember to like share and subscribe to the channel and uh, you can support the channel if you like uh, on the table link in the description below. You'll find the pattern in the description below as well. You can also throw throw something which I just recently developed on a channel, uh, which is called Super Thank, thank or Super Thank You or Super Thanks. 
uh, that is something which you should find just right below the video. So for the finish, we will use a solar spawn cure to finish off this beautiful bloody butcher. It's a beautiful fly and it works great both, uh, especially for Arctic char here in Iceland. I guess it's going to work out for sea trout as well and some other species. I just want to say to you guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.